we take uh, all the equivalence relation on x containing r then we take this class rho i such that rho i is an equivalence relation on x is an equivalence on x and it contains r let's take this class not all not not uh, the class of all equivalence relations but those equivalence relations containing r okay let's take all equivalence relations on x containing r that's uh, important here so there's a condition on those equivalence relations so obviously uh, this uh, let's denote this class by certain uh, certain letter of say let's denote it by this uh, cursive a then you can easily verify that x cross x belongs to cursive a that's simple because x cross x is an equivalence relation and it contains every relation on x so in particular it contains r because r is an equivalence on x so uh, x cross x is there so that means this cursive a is non empty so it's a non empty class of equivalence relations on x so i can find the intersection then then i can find the intersection then what's the intersection rho i it is also an equivalence relation and it also contains r it also contains r it also contains r and this is non empty because it contains r at least and this is an equivalence relation because intersection of equivalence relation is, is again an equivalence relation so but this equivalence relation is the smallest equivalence relation containing r because it is the intersection of all the equivalence relations containing r it is the smallest and and it's denoted by r e let's denote this by r e so this r e is the smallest is the is the smallest equivalence relation on x containing r okay containing r it's the smallest because it is the intersection of all the equivalence relations containing r so that it must be the smallest equivalence relation containing r and it's denoted by r e and we say this r we call this as r e is generated by r and we call it r e r e is generated by r so let me write that here, this here page number we say we say r e is generated by r we say r e is generated by r the relation r e is generated by r so uh let's uh, uh we try to uh, describe this r a in terms of r description of r a in what's the relation what's the relation between the relation r e and the relation r so that so we try to describe this r e uh, so description of r e okay description of r e in terms of r in terms of r so there should be something between r e and r so that's a uh, that's very important in case of in semi group theory actually so description of r e in terms of r okay so uh, let's try to uh, discuss that uh, let's try to discuss that uh, the description of r e in terms of r so uh, let's do it uh, in following the uh, uh let uh, uh let's discuss uh, certain things first uh, so let uh, let s be a relation let s be an uh, be a reflex relation not any relation be a reflexive relation on certain set x x and on empty set So that means this identity i x is subset of S. Okay, 
So our S is a relation, it's a reflex relation. So that means x comma x belongs to S for each x in uh, x. So I x is such stuff. Then uh, oh, one thing that you need to verify this S is subset of S composition S. So which is subset of S composition S composition S and so on and so forth. So that is we can write it as S subset of uh, let's write this S composition S as S square. So S square means S composition S subset of S cube and so on and so forth. So, uh, but uh, how do we verify this as a subset of S composition S and S composition S a subset of S composition S composition S? So, uh, this is simple. Uh, so, let's take a real element here. Uh, let's take any element here x, y, and S. So, this implies x, y belongs to S and y, y belongs to S because S is reflexive. So x comma y belongs to s, y comma y belongs to s. It means that by definition of composition, x comma y belongs to s composition s. That's the definition of composition actually. Uh, that's the definition of composition here. Definition of composition. Okay, similarly, we can see that s composition s is a subset of s composition s composition. So, so here we are using actually reflexivity. Reflexivity, we are using reflexivity here. Okay, so there are subsets S subset of S square subset of. So, in general, we can define S and uh, so let's define let's define the following set now. So, this is a very important set S infinity, which is equal to union of these S n is n runs from 1 to infinity. So, it's S union s square union s cube and so on and so forth so that's union and we will see that this as uh, infinity it's called a transitive closure why it's called a transitive closure we will show that s infinity is actually the transitive relation it is a transitive relation so obviously this s is subset of s infinity so that means ix is subset of I x is subset of s, s is subset of s infinity because it is the union of all these things. So uh, s infinity is reflexive, that's uh, trivial because it contains I x. But it's also transitive, that's important. It's also transitive. This relation is a trans <coughs> transitive relation on x containing s. And not only transitive, it is the smallest transitive relation on x containing s. That's why we call it a transit closure so this s infinity is called is called transit closure it's called transit closure of the relation s of the relation s and why it's called transit closure that we will see in the next term so as already, as already as already mentioned that this s infinity is actually the smallest transit relation containing as we'll see it in the next term So let's do that uh, result to uh, this, uh, let's write it as lemma, because this lemma is going to be very important uh, in our further study, uh, in our further discussion uh, that we're going to do. Uh, so for any reflexive relation, for any reflexive relation, for any reflexive relation, for any reflexive relation, as on x the relation the relation s infinity the relation s infinity defined by uh, here uh, let's uh, name it as a star defined by this star s infinity is equal to union of s n is defined by star defined by star is the smallest is the smallest is the smallest transitive relation is the smallest transitive relation on x containing s the smallest in the sense that it contains s 
containing S. Okay, let's uh, prove this. Uh, so we need to prove this transitive. So transitive means we take x y in S infinity. So let's take let's take x y belongs to S infinity and y z belongs to S infinity. So we need to show that x z should be y S infinity, not sorry, not uh, y infinity S infinity. Let x y belongs to S infinity, y z belongs to S infinity. What's S infinity actually? It's the union of S n. It's the union of composition is S n. So that means x y belongs to some S n, y z belongs to some S m. It's the union. Eh? So which means that x comma y belongs to S n. Y comma Z belongs to S M for some and and M, but S N is subset of S N plus M. S M is subset of S M plus N. So which means that X comma Y belongs to S N plus M. Y comma Z belongs to S N plus M. Okay, so both uh, are in uh, S n plus m. Okay, both are in S n plus m, and S n plus m, uh, it's a subset of S infinity. Uh, it's subset of S. Uh, sorry, uh, let's uh, write it as not. Uh, do this in this like that. Uh, uh, let's write here x z. Sorry, x z. Now x y belongs to S n. Y z belongs to S m. So that means x comma y, x comma z. So let's do it like this. X comma z. It belongs to the composition. S n composition. S m. Because S n is a relation. S m is a relation. X y belongs to S n. Y Z belongs to S M, so that means X comma Z belongs to S N composition S M by definition of the composition of by the relation. So which implies and this uh, S N it's equal to S N plus M and that's always subset of S infinity because S infinity is the union of all S N S. So which implies X comma Z belongs to S infinity. So that means S infinity is a transitive relation. Is a transitive relation. So next we show that it's it's the smallest transitive relation containing S. It contains S. So that's true. Well, it contains S because it's union of all S and sir. So therefore, uh, therefore, is a transitive relation. Is a transitive relation. Uh, therefore, this uh, relation. Is a transitive relation. Uh, is a transitive relation. Uh, sorry. Is a, is a transitive. Is a transitive relation. Is a transitive relation. It's a transitive relation on uh, on uh, X. Containing S, containing S, but we need to show that it is the smallest transitive relation containing S. It's the smallest transitive relation containing S. So let's take any let uh, let uh, let rho be any transitive relation on transitive relation on X. Containing S, we show that S infinity is subset of rho. So we need to show that S infinity is the smallest one. So it's contained in every transitive relation containing S. Okay. As uh, now, what is S square? It's equal to S composition is. But what is S? S is subset of rho. It is subset of rho, composition rho. That is equal to rho square. Since rho is transitive, therefore rho square is equal to rho. 
and similarly s cube it's equal to s composition s composition s subset of row composition row composition row that's equal to row square composition row what's row square row square is row because row is transitive it's equal to row square that's equal to row so s cube is subset so in general s power n is the subset of row for all n greater or equal to 1 so that means union of s n is n greater n runs from 1 to infinity it's also subset of row but this one it's actually s infinity definition of s infinity subset of s it's subset of row so that means s row is the smallest transitive relation containing s it's the smallest transitive relation containing s okay it's the smallest transitive relation containing s So now uh, the next theorem uh, in which we give the description of R E in terms of R that's very important and that theorem states that given any relation R we show that R E is equal to R union R inverse union I X power infinity. So we show this. So this is a description of R E in terms of R. So that's uh, very important that description. So, uh, so we shall uh, we need to prove this uh, actually uh, this theorem. Uh, so let's uh, write the statement of this uh, theorem proposition. So given any relation R for any relation R for any relation R on X, we show that. The smallest equivalence containing R is equal to R union R inverse union identity. So first we show that this relation. Let's let uh, let's denote this E by E is equal to R union R inverse union I X. Okay, let's denote this by E. That whole infinity. Okay, let's denote this by infinity. So <coughs> let's denote this relation by this. So we, uh, by definition, R E is the smallest equivalence relation containing R. We show that this relation E is also the smallest equivalence relation containing R. So that means this E should be equal to R E. So first we need to show that this relation is an equivalence relation E. Then we show that it is the smallest one containing R. So one thing is clear that. Uh, I X is subset of R union R inverse union I X, and this is always subset of R union R inverse union I X power infinity, and that's equal to E. So I X is subset of E. I X is subset of E because it, it, this union contains I X, and S is always subset of S infinity that I already discussed. It. S infinity is the union of all S N S. So this is your uh, it's like uh, your S. So let's uh, if I will denote it by s, uh, so e is equal to s infinity. So let's denote this by s. So s is subset of s infinity. So this is your s, s infinity. Okay, and s infinity is equal to e. So i x is subset of s, s is subset of s infinity. S infinity is our e. So that means e is reflexive. E is reflexive. Next, uh, we see that this e is also symmetric. This is symmetric. E is symmetric. Okay. E is symmetric. So how do we do that? Uh, e is symmetric. Uh, so uh, we have used this notation. S is equal to R union R inverse union I X. So this uh, S is symmetric. S is symmetric. So clearly S is symmetric. Clearly S is. So that's simple because for if any order pair x y belongs to s, so that order pair is either in R or in R inverse or in I x. So then y x also belongs to either in R or in R inverse or in I x. So this is very simple. Suppose let me let me explain it here. Let's let's take this order pair in s. That s is equal to this. 
So in case x y belongs to i x, then x is equal to y because it is an identity relation. Then y x also is in i x. So then that means y x belongs to s in that case. So let's uh, 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 let's not consider this case. X y belongs to i x. So if uh, if i x uh, x y belongs to R, suppose. So this means y x belongs to R inverse. So this means y x belongs to R union R inverse union I x. So whenever x y belongs to R union R inverse union I x, then y x also belongs to R union R inverse union I x. So in case in uh, if this, if x y belongs to R. second if x y belongs to R inverse, then y x belongs to R. So that means y x belongs to R union R inverse union I x. So that relation is symmetric. S is symmetric. This is trivial. S is symmetric. So then uh, we need uh, we need to show that S n is also symmetric. So but what is S n actually? So S is symmetric means S inverse is equal to S. So this means S n which is equal to S power minus one whole n, and this is equal to S inverse S inverse composition n times. That's the definition, and that's equal to. Uh, we know that rho composition, say so sigma whole inverse is equal to sigma inverse composition rho inverse. So it is also equal to whole inverse, but uh, uh, these as they will change their position is, uh, but it is the same as everywhere. So it is equal to s composition s composition composition s whole inverse. So that's equal to s n whole inverse. So that means S n is equal to S n whole inverse for all n greater or equal to one, which means that S n is symmetric. S n is symmetric. Okay, S n is symmetric because S n is same as S n whole inverse. It's symmetric. So this means uh, this means E, which is equal to S infinity. That's by definition. Union S n and runs from one to infinity is also is also symmetric. That's too simple because uh, if you need to verify, let's take x y. Let's take x y belongs to E, so that means x y belongs to some S n. X comma y belongs to S n for some n, for some n, which implies y x also belongs to S n because S n is symmetric. So whenever y x belongs to S n, means y x belongs to union of S n, all the S n s, and runs from one to infinity. So that means y x belongs to. E. So this relation is symmetric. This relation is symmetric. And moreover, S infinity is always because since S is since since S is reflexive because S is the union R union R inverse union I x. S is symmetric, reflexive. So therefore, S infinity is transitive already. Then, whenever S is 